Hello YouTube, Ace and Moogle here. How's it going? Uh, we're actually going to do a bit of a special today. We're going to have a look at uh, a bit of a topic. Okay, it's a bit of an older topic on the news, but something we should still talk about and address. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a reason why it's still relevant to this day. So anyways, apparently the Russian government has decided to start funding, quote, patriotic games. Yep. Uh, so anyways, um, a story here is, uh, goes actually back to 2013. Uh, apparently, when uh, Company of Heroes 2 came out, that uh, received a lot of criticism over in Russia, from both uh, Russian gamers in general and from the Russian government. Yep. Uh, apparently, the reason was uh, they felt that uh, while a lot of the stuff that uh, is that happens in the game did actually happen, it is exact. They felt that it was exaggerated in the game to the point of parody, essentially. Yep. Um, so they just so they were essentially outraged by it because of this. Uh, now the game now that normally this isn't that much of an issue because, well, folks are, aren't really supposed to take games that seriously in terms of historical accuracy. They're not supposed to be the quintessential uh, source, we'll say. Yeah. But the problem is, is that the game's developer actually came out and uh, defended it by saying. This is uh, this is historically accurate. This is what actually happened, and it is all represented in that game. And uh, the reason we say this is because we had historical research to back this up. Uh, the problem is, of course, is that the, all the is that um, for most uh, for most folks, most of the information regarding the Eastern Front on World War II came from the German point of view of things. Yep, and that of course is going to have that is of course going to paint the war in a very different picture uh, than what it might have actually been like. Exactly. Now, on the flip side of things, of course, uh, the Russian gov or the Soviet government at the time wasn't exactly the most honest. We'll say they were actually very, very famous for rewriting history to what they felt suited them best. Uh, so, on the other hand, that pr those uh, sources were probably very inaccurate as well. So the truth of it is probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, both sides are exaggerated to a point, one way or the other, and the reality is somewhere in the middle there. So, anyways, uh, in reaction to all this, the uh, Russia's cultural minister, Vladimir Medinsky, if I'm pronouncing his ra name right, I think I am, uh, said that he wanted to fund game. Uh, said that a video game has to not only have entertainment value, but it also has to teach and be conductive to patriotic education. Yep. And my God, are those some scary words there? Oh yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, so apparently the Russian Military Historical Society, which is met, led by Medinsky, what is going to start funding a video game. And their first project here was going to focus on the beginning of Russian military aviation during World War One. Now I'm quoting this GameSpot article here, and I'm also, uh, and it is it was itself quoting a Hollywood Reporter article, which was itself recording uh, reporting on a Russian interview. <laughs> so uh, um, credit goes to all those guys for that bit of information. Now. Uh, and the reason I found out about this, by the way, uh, goes to, uh, I've been on the Angry Joe forums, and, it, and the credit to actually uh, showing me this information goes to Mr. Molotov here. So, shout out to Mr. Molotov, thank you for letting me know about this, yep. and by the way, your, your name is pretty damn awesome. That is. Alright, so uh, anyways, let's talk about the game in general, because I was actually able to find out what game uh, the, Russian, uh, the Russian Military Historical Society Mm -hmm. uh, funded who was making the game, what the game was, and the uh, end result of it. So the game is, or was, supposed to be Ilya Muromets. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Muromets bomber was a, uh, it came out originally in 1913 as a passenger plane. Uh, it went on to be the first heavy bomber of World War I. It's got some interesting uh, accomplishments to its name. Uh, and the there and of course this tra the trailer that they have here will point out. We're not actually going to play the trailer, but uh, Moogle, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I mean it is a very straightforward trailer. It does a very good job of showing how the plane functions and feels like a basic flight simulator. But when the narrator is going up to uh, make sure to point out 
that the plane was made by the uh, by the, uh, the Russian inventor there, it, that's when you're sitting there going, "Oh, there's the propaganda." Yeah, because I kind of, I kind of uh, make a point of it. Yeah, it's like, yes, this is a Russian scientist, a Russian inventor. It's like, yeah, okay, thank you, we get it. We don't care. We just want to make sure the plane flies. Thanks. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but yeah, the plane was indeed built by an engineer from Russia. His name was Igor Sikorsky, mm -hmm. who was actually uh, famous later on for his work in the United States uh, when he fled Russia uh, later on. Uh, but but that's another story. So anyways, so Ilya Muromets actually was going to be made. It, it was uh, you might be uh, you might notice the screenshot here. The, it looks like it came from a very specific engine. It looks a little bit familiar. Well, the game actually was made by 1C and 777 Studios. And if there's one thing that 777 Studios is uh, familiar with uh, making, it is this game, Rise of Flight. Now, Rise of Flight itself is actually a very famous uh, flight sim set in the First World War. It's got some uh, excellent flight model, uh, pretty good uh, visuals for the time. It still looks pretty good, I'd say. Oh, yeah. In fact, here's a screenshot here. Um, you might notice, well, why is this on Rise of Flight's uh, store page here? Well, well, this is because uh, someone actually had the idea to, instead of making uh, Aaliyah Muromets a standalone game, they actually decided to make it an expansion for the uh, for Rise of Flight. You can actually pick up the expansion, here it is, for 20 bucks. Uh, you get, uh, in this you actually get the Aaliyah Muromets, the Newport 17 Russian, uh, and the Albatross D3, and then all mods for the uh, modifications for the Albatross and the Newport 17 and the special campaign. Um, oh, by the way, I should mention that uh, later on that would, they kind of defeated their purpose because they made the Newport 17 Russian a free plane after they did this for some hilarious reason. And I only got, and I already had the Albatross D3 <laughs> anyways, so I ended up getting... Well, I ended up essentially just being able to pick up the Mermets and the um, and the campaign. And by the way, they also ended up releasing a new campaign now. Well, also, or actually, they ended up releasing the San Mihail campaign for free later on. And I can't talk about the prices here being expensive, but that's actually going to be in a separate video, I think. Uh, the get what you should know about the game, though, is aside from it being a very famous flight sim, it's not only that, but it is actually was ranked in one of the top 100 games of all time by PC Gamer. Uh, here's the actual. Here's a screenshot of the magazine from December, I think, 2012. December 2012, I think, of it listing it as number 47 in that list. Thank you, Laser from SimHQ for posting this, and thank you, SimHQ, and thank you, PC Gamer, I guess. All right, so here we're going to. Here's the special goodie I've got for you guys. We, I have Rise of Flight on here. We are actually going to now do a review on this game for to check to see just how much propaganda material is actually in it. Alright, All right, for your entertainment. So let's have a look. And it's going to start. Uh, we see on the right hand side there the symbol of the Russian Military Historical Society. It's beautiful. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, right, so let's log in. And we're going to wait for the ballerina girl to do her, uh, ballerina girl statue to do her dance there. Obviously, a bit of propaganda. Obviously, she goes round. She goes round. She goes round. Oh. Yeah, I already received some medals in this game for playing it. Well, not just playing it, but uh, let's. Okay, let's start with the campaign select. Oh, okay, already we've got some propaganda here. Some propaganda posters. Uh, thing is, though, this has always been the campaign selection screen. They always put a propaganda poster on for the campaigns. And you can actually count them one, two, three. If you're counting the, cam uh, the training campaign here, three campaigns for the Americans and propaganda posters match, and one German plus one Russian. Now, you could argue, I suppose, that uh, that we don't understand Russian. This probably says something uh, in it, but unless it says something like uh, Putin rules all or something like that, I think yeah. we'll be okay. And I don't think that's quite the case ah, here. All right, so. Let's, uh, the campaign, by the way, is only 10 missions, um, which is kind of short for a uh, flight sim. They do also have some bugs, but uh, some hilarious bugs, too, I should mention. Like, quote, uh, let's see here. On our way back home, 
We stopped for lunch on an airfield near Name. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that actually happens. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, anyways, uh... So, yeah. Some some obvious little bugs that are probably going to end up fixing that. I, I'd say that we're actually going to show you the most, uh, what is arguably the closest example I can get to propaganda in this game so far that I've seen. Now, uh, while we're loading up, uh, we're going. To, yeah, you'll notice that the loading screen itself is actually a movie theater. Yep. And it's also showing uh, good-looking screenshots of the game of different aircraft, which are also all curiously, apparent, uh, as of yet, on the Western Front. We've only seen two planes: a German and a British plane. So we're going to let it load, and it sometimes can take a while. I should mention that it's actually a smart move, I'd say, on the part of. Uh, everyone that made this to make it a make it part of Rise of Flight because that way you already have the fan base you don't have to build one up from scratch yep. and uh, in addition to that Rise of Flight also has a career mode and I figure that that's prob this is probably going to be in that also at some yep. point that'd be a pretty cool so let's look at the description here uh, yeah okay seems right pretty standard stuff uh, created by Russian engineers led by the famous Igor Sikorsky the plane constructed in 1913 lifted 16 passengers and a dog with an overall weight of more than a thousand kilograms into the air. And those Russians and sending dogs up into the air. Seriously, once in a plane, then another in a space pod. Yep. Alright, so let's see. Um, yeah, oh, uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, for the first time in aviation history, it was also a passenger plane. It had an insulated passenger saloon with a bedroom, a lounge, and a toilet. <laughs> well, welcome to the uh, two-kilometer uh, high club there. Yeah, there you go. All right, so yeah, it seems like some uh, fairly decent uh, documentation here. Mm -hmm. uh, shot down 12 enemy fighters. The enemy only managed to damage three and took uh, and only shot one of them down. And that's actually pretty impressive. This is I uh, considering this uh, the small numbers of uh, well, con all things considered, this is actually rather impressive. Um, this is, I now I don't claim to know everything about everything, but I do. But I do have quite a bit of uh, study in World War One, so I do know quite a bit about it. And I did actually have a look at the uh, Sikorsky plane years. Uh, I've done research on it for years now, uh, well before this. Now, I can tell you uh, right off the top of my head that it actually act, it actually holds the record as the only bomber in history to have ever shot down more enemy fighters than it ever lost to them, mm -hmm. which is quite a feat if you ask me. And uh, Oh, yeah. Something that they should be proud of, I guess. But let's look at the sources here. At the bottom here. It's all in Russian. Well, that's actually, I can't, I guess it's all right. I can't really look it up too well. But look at the date here. 1968. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, yes. We all know that the people in charge of Russia at that time were the most honest group. Oh, of course. They were... Yeah, you could say anything in Russia and get away with it, of course, obviously. I mean, they... Yes, um, they were the most trustworthy group in the world, the Russian government at that time, along with the American CIA. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, obviously. I believe... Yeah, uh, yes, in Soviet Russia, documents cite you. <laughs> <laughs> we're actually going to have a look here at the mission here, and... Now, I did mention that in this mission that it was the uh, closest thing I've seen to propaganda as of yet in this game. Mm -hmm. The reason is, I, I did the uh, research, uh, because the mission itself is that uh, you have to use the Muromets plane to fly to a frontline air base and pick up some wounded and deliver them uh, to the rear so they can receive medical treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, I did some research and tried to look around, but I couldn't really find any case of it actually being used in this manner. Uh, that being said, there's a few things I'd like to point out. First of all, while I couldn't find the Muromets plane being used like this, I did, I was easily able to find the, uh, I was pretty easily able to find that on the Western Front, uh, aircraft were, to a very, to some extent, very limited extent, oh, yeah. used to transport wounded. In fact, even treat them. So they even had a case of, so it was, it was actually medevac rather than casavac. So, uh, in addition to that, uh, this Muromets plane was actually originally a passenger plane. Yep. Flight model on it, flight handling characters on it are pretty much excellent. Very easy to fly. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've actu 
I actually let Moogle try flying it twice uh, already, and he's not much of a flight server, but what do you think? Yeah, I thought it actually handled pretty well. I mean, it, I mean, as you said, I'm not very good at uh, a lot of flight sims, but I was at least doing uh, the best I could and was uh, doing fairly well. Um, unfortunately, I still look like I'm uh, half drunk while I'm driving, but, or while I'm flying it, but oh well. Yeah, hear you on that. Anyways, so while we're looking at this, uh, so what else can I talk about on it? Um, well, I could say that. Well, I could say, uh, documentation-wise, there's another important thing to consider. This plane and the story back behind it uh, was during the time of Imperial Russia. Yeah. It was 99 years ago in the, that this mission is supposed to occur. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of things have happened in Russia and Eastern Europe in general in those past 99 years. Exactly. A lot of wars, a lot of government changes, and in some cases, a lot of, well, coloring of history, we'll say. So it'd be quite understandable for documentation to get lost or destroyed in that time span. Uh, uh, World War II was very famous, for example, for causing a lot of uh, causing a lot of uh, historical records to simply get destroyed, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, government records to be destroyed, uh, museums were hit in the war which yep. which destroyed works of art and things like that, uh, landmarks yeah, destroyed, so you, you get the idea. Uh, so it could be very possible that it, uh, because of that, that while the, while the Muromets plane did in fact carry wounded to the back, or might have been able to, mm -hmm. there's no real documentation for it. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's quite understandable. Now, is it now the thing I have to say? Now, the reason I say that it could be considered propaganda, or the closest to propaganda, is because, well, like I said, it's no, there's no discernible proof that it actually was used that way. That said, though, if this is propaganda, it's pretty weak propaganda. Oh yeah. Uh, ultimately, uh, that's my take on it. Um, now we're not going to be able to show you the entire flight because oh, yeah. the uh, because the game has been having issues with our recording software, uh, especially when we try to speed it up to 16 times to speed things up. And uh, so we're going to wrap it up here. Mooga, what's your opinion on the game? Uh, I think it actually uh, is a good game. I mean, the uh, I mean, it, uh, like I, like we said, it plays well. The realism is really uh, well done. And I, I just feel that it uh, works uh, works out very well as a as a really good flight sim. All right. Well, what's your opinion, uh, propaganda wise? Now, propaganda wise, I feel it's actually fair because you don't have too much of it being one side or the other. It actually it represents uh, pretty well how the propaganda on both sides of the war uh, really played out. You mean how the actual story played out? Oh, yeah. Well, he, Mogul's kind of sleepy here. <laughs> Sorry, we've been trying to do this recording for a while. Yeah, uh, was about three hours at this point. Sorry, guys. Oh, uh, anyways, but yeah, so... Uh, yeah, coffee wore out about four hours ago. <laughs> ultimately, uh, but yeah, what he's trying to say, though, is that... Um, uh, is I think for what you're trying to say, essentially, is that... Uh, it doesn't appear to have much propaganda at all. It, no, no. It does, now, it doesn't show the war from the German spot, side, at least not this campaign. It's an yeah. all-Russian campaign. But it doesn't try to portray the Germans in a negative manner. No. And it doesn't try to over-glorify the Russians either, I'd yeah. say. Um, Same with the U.S. either. Yeah, exactly. Uh, ultimately, I'd, uh, so reviewing, I think Mughal and I both gave it a passable rating for a lack of, uh, a lack of propaganda in it. Yeah. I, now, uh, as for the value of the game, or the expansion, I should say, is $20. Um, at the present time, the 10 missions are, are rather short and rather slim offerings, I'd say, compared to other stuff that you can see flight sim-wise. Now, the Muromets plane itself, the Ilya Muromets, is a very interesting plane in aviation history. And this is the only time I know of that it's actually ever been portrayed in a game. The other time being Empire's Dawn of War, which is a, uh, which is an, an Empire Earth spinoff. It's an RTS. So ultimately, it's up to you. And uh, later on, they will. Chances are, they will add a career mode. They will add single missions that uh, let you do more stuff with the uh, Ilium Romance. So yeah, it is an interesting plane. Um, mm -hmm. It is worth looking into, but it is going to be pricey at twenty dollars. Oh yeah. So, uh, but ultimately, that's our view on it. Ace here. That move.
Uh, hopefully we are finally getting this video done and over with. Oh, for the love of God. I think we've spent like two days trying to get this. Yep. Uh, so we will hopefully see you guys again soon, and hopefully our recording software will be far more functional. Yep. Have a good day, everyone. Yep.